Hello everybody, I'm joined by Carol Hallam, an independent nurse consultant in infection prevention. Carol's very kindly joined us today to discuss masks, PPE and gloves. So thank you Carol. As we're all aware, under these COVID circumstances, there's a lot of confusion as to what is best practice, what should and shouldn't be happening. So um, Carol, what I've actually uh, seen is a lot of people, yeah, um, seem to be sort of uh, confused about wearing they should or shouldn't be wearing face masks in public. What, what's your view on that? Thank you, Clive. That, that's an interesting question. And I think to be able to answer it, uh, we just need a little bit of understanding about um, COVID-19. So COVID-19 is one of the coronaviruses and coronaviruses are a family of viruses that can cause diseases ranging from the common cold, we all experience the common cold, right through to MERS, which is the Middle East um, Respiratory Syndrome, and, and, um, sorry, and SARS, which is the uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. We saw that in 2003, and I think uh, uh, sorry, COVID-19 is, is very similar to the SARS. So, and often referred to as SARS-2. So to understand how it spreads, um, then we need to have that understanding if we're looking at what is the correct protective uh, equipment. So it's predominantly spread by droplet and people say, well, what do you mean by droplet spread? So droplet means we, as we speak, as we maybe sing or, or, or we're talking, we actually expel virus into the air um, on, um, large droplet nuclei. So these are droplets that are larger than five microns and um, so that means they're quite heavy and they, they soon settle down onto surfaces and then they become a contact transmission. So we pick them up on our hands and then we can then transmit that to our eyes, nose or mouth. So to get the COVID-19 infection we need to either get contamination from a droplet that gets into our eyes, nose or mouth, or we need to have contamination on our hands and our hands go to our eyes, nose or mouth. So to answer your interesting question about, we see people in masks, should masks be worn or not? Uh, I think the answer there is, in healthcare settings, there's a real need to be wearing uh, face masks. In public, I would suggest that if we can do social distancing, then actually we don't need to wear a mask. There's real dangers of wearing a mask. So actually the risk is that people wear a mask, and this is in outside of healthcare settings. Uh, we see people wearing masks that are sort of under their nose, even under their chin. People are lifting the mask up, lifting them down. And as you can see, I put my hands where my mask would be, but actually near to my eye, eyes, nose and mouth. So therefore, my hands are more likely to be contaminated and I'm actually taking my hands near to my face. So the risk that actually masks would cause more damage than good in public. So I think if, if, if we were wearing masks in, in public, we would need to really provide some, some education to, to the public about when to wear them, how to wear them, and, and really not forgetting that hands become contaminated. Um, so the, I, I think there is a place for masks in public where, and, and it might be what the government recommend, that actually where we can't do social distancing. So for example, if you live in high rise flats and you have to use the lift, you might not always be able to use that lift on your own, or if you're using public transport like the, uh, the underground system in London, if that's your way to get to work as a key worker, then there might be a benefit there in wearing a mask. Do, do you feel that's answered the, the, the question? Yes, thank you, Carol. Um, really, actually, very, very clear. Interesting you say about the about the hands, yeah, because I've also noticed some people seem to be wearing disposable gloves when they're out and about. Now, I haven't done this myself yet, but just wondering, is this something we should be doing as well? I think the use of gloves outside of the healthcare setting is really worrying because I think it's giving people a real false sense of security. Um, you know, our hands become contaminated very quickly. So, you know, hand washing is the most important thing here. So 
good frequent hand washing particularly after you've been out when you come in come back in the house um you know when you go to the the supermarket and you get back you need to to be washing your hands so if we wear gloves what happens with the gloves is they become contaminated like our hands but then we can't wash our uh, our gloves so so people think that the gloves are, are protecting them but actually they're not they they become that false sense of security um so i would i would not recommend gloves outside of the healthcare setting um i think people do overuse them um so and and yes i i myself have seen people in public wear wearing gloves and actually i think i've seen something that was saying that in the airports that people will be asked to wear gloves uh, which actually really makes me feel worried and um cringe because actually we're better off without the gloves the, this virus will not transmit through the skin on our hands it's got to get to our eyes nose or mouth that is so clear. Thank you so much. And quite reassuring because I haven't been wearing gloves and I'll continue not to wear gloves. Now, you've mentioned, uh, we've mentioned gloves, we've mentioned masks. We're all seeing sort of like uh, on the tabloid press, um, there seems to be an, a major issue about PPE in the NHS. Is it true? Do we have, is it a major risk that we don't have the PPE, that, uh, that our healthcare heroes are at risk? What's your experience on this? So, well, I, I'm currently not working uh, in a healthcare environment at the moment, but I, I think, you know, we, we've seen on, on the press some, some really, um, you know, sort of scary information about the number of deaths, the number of healthcare staff affected and shortages of PPE. And I'd be wrong to say that the NHS hasn't been challenged to be able to provide uh, the right PPE, so the personal protective equipment, the aprons and gloves for staff. But I think, you know, they've caused a lot of anxiety in staff and, and I, I think it's about understanding, again, those routes of transmission and actually the appropriate use of, of, um, uh, of the PPE. So in a healthcare setting, we have procedures, what we call aerosol generating procedures. And in those procedures, we're actually generating aerosols where we've got the virus in smaller droplets. So we've got the virus in uh, very small uh, nuclei, uh, droplet nuclei, where, where it can be transmitted in the air for a little bit longer than, than in normal practice. So in those circumstances, staff need to wear something called an FFP3 or an FFP2 mask. Uh, so these are the high efficacy masks. They, they, they filter the very, very fine uh, particles that might, uh, might transmit. Those should only be worn when we're doing aerosol generation procedures, but because of the, the, the information we've seen in the media uh, and that anxiety of staff, I think staff have felt that every procedure, they've wanted those type of masks and they're wanting the full gear. And to just take a bit of a step back is, when we first saw this um, COVID-19 emerging in, uh, in Wuhan, in, uh, sorry, Wuhan in China, we actually saw people in full hazmat gear. So these are the, the, the full um, protective suits um, and full face masks, uh, 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 boots and, and, and overshoes and everything and I think that's because that was quite right at that time because this was a, a new disease where we didn't understand um, how, how it was being transmitted so therefore that was the right equipment at the time but as we began to understand that this is a respiratory virus that transmits the way that most respiratory viruses transmit then actually we changed um, change our guidance our national guidance is based on the evidence uh, of normal respiratory viruses but people have still got in their mind that full gear and and so you know so i think that's what they were wanting uh, and i think you know i have to give uh, full credit here to my infection prevention and control colleagues out there working on the front line actually having to try and reassure uh, staff in 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 the hospitals and, and in care homes about what is 
the right method of uh, uh, or the right PPE and really focusing on the, the right time to wear it and, and not forgetting the basics of hand hygiene uh, and that social distancing. If we are more than uh, two metres from an individual, then that virus is not going to catch it, it's not going to spread unless we're in those aerosol generation procedure environments like at critical care. And just to give you a bit of an example is, if you think of um, a 10 bedded uh, intensive care unit, so there's 10 patients in there, I, I, I'm no expert here, but maybe there's 15 staff in there. So 15 staff working a 12 hour shift, you know, they're going to need to go to the toilet, they're going to need to have a, um, a break, comfort break, food break. So if we say they have three breaks, then then actually they're going to have to have three sets of equipment. So to manage those uh, those 10 beds, 15 staff, so in a 12 hour period, that's 45 full sets of equipment, uh, two 12 hour shifts, so that'd be 90 pieces of kit, and that's just for a, a 12 bed intensive care units. We've got intensive unit intensive care units up and down the country some of them have got 20 beds 25 beds you can start to see i'm no mathematician but you can start to see the maths here that actually thousands and thousands of pieces of equipment are required and actually worldwide uh, people are, are, are wanting this type of equipment for their critical care staff particularly so therefore there's a real challenge worldwide uh, and, and so therefore it you know, our NHS was definitely going to be challenged. Um, and, and, you know, without a doubt, I think there's been peaks where there's been real concern that are they going to get through this weekend with in, in, enough equipment? Um, but, you know, we're resourceful and we found that equipment. Does that answer your question? It does. And, and thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining us today. Um, if anyone's got any questions or comments, then please don't hesitate. Put them below on the stream. Yeah, ask them. And uh, thank you again, Carol. And we look forward to uh, both of seeing you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.